praise God. Uh, hallelujah, hallelujah. I want to thank God so much for this opportunity to share the word of God today. I believe that we will be blessed. We'll be very blessed. Uh, today, I want to briefly share with us on what I have titled the divine mirror. The divine mirror. The divine mirror, praise the Lord Jesus Christ. The divine mirror. And so we will go quickly to the book of Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians chapter three. Second Corinthians chapter three. And we shall read verse 18. It says, but we all with open face, beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the spirit of the Lord. Okay, it says, but we all with open face, beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the spirit of the Lord. I want to appreciate God for my wife. Uh, she's, these days she's uh, sharing with us the scriptures. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. She's such a blessing. We already have our verse there. It's, but we all with open face beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord are changed. It says into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the spirit of the Lord. Now that's very powerful. That's very, very powerful. He's talking about the divine mirror. The divine mirror. It is important that you see yourself through this divine mirror. Okay? Because this divine mirror is what has been ordained by God to reveal you who you are. Who you are. And it's very, very important to know who you are. Very, very important to know who you are. Okay? And the reason as to why we talk about the knowledge of Jesus Christ, to know God, because there are people who say, well, no, it's not about knowing who you are. You have to know who God is. It's not you, it's God. You have to know who, who, who God is. Yes, in knowing God, you get to know who you are. Okay? When we talk about uh, Jesus Christ, when we get to know this Jesus, the more we know him, the more we are revealed. Because you see, the true you is revealed in Jesus Christ. The true you is revealed in Jesus Christ. When you, when you understand who Christ is, you understand who you are. Why? Because you are in him. I am in him. My identity is in Christ. Okay, my identity is in Christ. Your identity is in Christ. Or even to say it better, your identity is Christ. Okay, your identity is Christ. The Bible is very clear when he says to us in the book of First John, First John chapter 4, I believe verse 17. He says, herein is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. He says, Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. He says, because as he is, so are we in this world. As he is, so are we in this world. Okay? So now the divine mirror shows you, when you look into the divine mirror, you see Jesus. But when you see Jesus, then you are informed that as he is, as he is, so are you. Because the mirror is a declaration. Okay? Every mirror is a declaration. When you stand before a mirror, it will declare. Okay? If you have a pimple somewhere, the mirror, the mirror will declare. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Whatever you have on your face, 
the mirror will declare. The, the work of the mirror is to declare. Okay? So now the divine mirror, the declaration of the, the divine mirror is that as Jesus is, so are you. Now that's very powerful because we then have to start discovering who this Jesus is. Because in knowing who he is, that's where you and I are revealed. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. You and I are revealed in him. The divine mirror declares that as he is, so are you. That's a declaration of the divine mirror. Now, why is it important to know who you are? When you don't know who you are and what, what you are, the devil will give you identity. When you don't know your, your, who you are, anything goes. Whatever they call you, you go with it. Whatever the devil declares you are, you take. Okay? There are some of you, the way you look in the devil's mirror. <laughs> hey. The devil also has a mirror that he shows people. It's you, you are a broke man. Look at you. It's even even uses words like, look at you. Look at you, you're so broke. <laughs> you're so, so broke. Look at you, you're going to die. You're so sick. Now, if he finds you without identity, that's a gap in, in which he puts his images. Okay? When he finds that your identity is not declared, he declares his on you. Okay? And because you also didn't have identity, it is easy to accept any, anything they call you. Whatever they call you is what you go with. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. But when you know who you are, when the devil comes and, and, and gives a, a, a definition of his own, you, you wonder, okay, devil, are you confused? You think I don't know who, you, who I am? I know who I am. I also know who you are. See, because when the devil comes, you pull out the word and, because, and then he also sees who he is. <laughs> and one of the things the devil doesn't like is to look at himself he's very ashamed <laughs> he's very ashamed he like, the devil doesn't like mirrors because they reveal him who he is even him he doesn't like to see himself when we begin to talk about the devil he begins he becomes angry because he doesn't like to hear those things <laughs> hey because it's, it's, it's not it's not nice to, to, to look at or to mm -mm. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. But for us, the Bible says, as he is. So our study of Christ, our wanting to know him, the end of that is that it declares us. It declares who we are. Who Jesus is, is who we are. Who Jesus is declared to be, is who we are. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. For example, this mirror I have put of myself on this screen today, I don't like it. I don't like it. It's... It looks, it looks nice, but I wish it was perfect. <laughs> because the Bible says, looking in the perfect law of liberty. So I'll take another minute and just remove it. <laughs> Praise God. Sorry for the inconvenience. I have to remove this. I, can't, I don't like myself. <laughs> I don't like myself. The way I look, this mirror is not good. <laughs> I've shifted back to common <laughs> Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. I even feel more bold, more bold and more confident to share the word of God. <laughs> Hi, my wife has laughed. <laughs> I think because I mentioned Koman Boga. Koman Boga, Koman Boga is a place of, 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 uh, of the presence of God. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So as he is, so are we. As Jesus is, so are you. As Jesus is, so are you. That's why now you have to invest. Listen, don't just buy mirrors. Invest in the word of God. The earthly mirror will show you the outward man. And you have seen the outward man enough years. All these years you have been seeing the outward man. When are you going to look at the inward man? Why is it important to look at yourself in this divine mirror? Why is it very important? Because this was God's plan from the beginning. This was God's plan from the beginning. Let me show you this plan in the book of Romans chapter 6. No, Romans chapter 8, sorry. Romans 
Thank you, Lord Jesus. Verse from verse 29. Okay. Actually, verse 29. Can we just read verse 29? Romans 8 29. Romans 8 29. It says, For whom he did for one, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. The one whom he foreknew, he also predestinated to be conformed to the image of his son. God is not interested in any other face except the face of his son. <laughs> From the beginning, God's plan was not to see you. Okay? When God sees, he doesn't want to see you. He wants to see his son. He wants to see his son, not you. <laughs> <laughs> that was his plan from the beginning he's not interested in your face <laughs> Aye. he loves us but he loves whenever he looks at us he doesn't want to see what we see he wants to see his he's interested in seeing his son and so he, he predestined us to be conformed to that image of the son okay that's why john says when we shall see him we shall be as he is he says, we do not yet appear what we shall be. He says, we don't yet appear what we shall be. He says, but we know that when he sh shall appear, we shall be like him. Why? He says, because we shall see him as he is. Which means, if you see him as he is, you will become as he is. You will appear. The appearance will show up. Because right now, what is not there is the appearance. Everything he is, we are. The only thing lag lagging behind is the appearance. Because whoever... Everything Jesus is, you also are. Whether it looks like or it doesn't look like. Now, that looking like is what is coming at the appearing of Jesus Christ. When he appears, but says, all of us shall be as he is. Why? Because we shall see him. Look at what, what happens. Says, we shall see him as he is. Our seeing him as he is is what will make us look like him. The, the appearance will, will, will change. Okay? The day we see him, if you had a bald head, your hair will come back. <laughs> oh, praise God. That, that I can get an amen for, from any bald man watching. Praise God. That hair will just show up. Praise God. Is it the day he appears? But then you see, <laughs> you may not want to just wait for Jesus to appear. There's an opportunity for you to look into his word and see who he is. See who he is already before he appears. There is the information we already have about this son of God. If you look at this divine mirror, you begin to receive the likeness. Even your physical structure begins to change by reason of staring into this divine mirror. That's what you read in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 3, uh, that verse, uh, verse 18. Praise Lord Jesus Christ. Let's look at it again. 3.18, where he says, But we all, with open face, beholding us in a glass, the glory of the Lord says we behold the glory of the Lord. In that glass, there is the mirror. Okay? Beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, beholding the glory of the Lord, it says are changed into the same image. We are changed into the, when we see that glory, we are changed into the same image of that glory. The same image of that glory. Okay? There is a change. There's a change. That is not a change in the spirit. No, it's, it's actually a, an, an, an entire being. The entire you is transformed, transfigured. Okay? An entire you is transfigured. The word there, tra tra transform, or, or uh, to, to be changed, is the word to be transfigured. The same way Jesus was transfigured at the mount. You know, but we talk about the, trans the, the transfiguration of Christ at the mount. He changed. He was changed. He was not the man they were, they were always seeing. They were walking with. When he reached there, he was transfigured. Now, that is the kind of transfiguration that begins to take place as we behold the glory of God. That is why God, God cares a lot what you see, what is set before you. He cares a lot what, is, what, what, what we preach to you to be. Because every time we preach, we are showing you the divine mirror to see who you are. We are showing you the divine mirror. Now, when we show you anything that is not Christ, we are deceiving you. Any man who preaches, and at the end of their sermon, you don't see Christ. You have been successfully deceived. Praise Jesus Christ. 
We even have there, the, the, the Greek word there is metamorpho. Metamorpho. We, from where we get the word metamorphosis. It means to change into another form. To change into another form. It says to transfigure. That's the word, to transfigure. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. To transfigure. To transfigure. Praise God. So on the Mount of Transfiguration, Jesus Christ, he was transfiguration. Actually, it was the transfiguration that gave that mount, mountain a name. It was called the Mount of Transfiguration because Jesus transfigured on it. It's not the mountain that gave him identity. He gave the mountain identity. That's what happens when you are transfigured. You, you give identity. You are not given identity. The mountain is actually called Mount of Transfiguration now. It's a Mount of Transfiguration. But it, is not, it was not the mountain of transfiguration such that if you climb it, you transfigure. No, because the people who make overnights and they say this overnight is called overnight of mount of transfiguration. So in other words, if you climb this mountain, you are going to be, to be transformed. No, it was not the mountain that made him transfigure. It is him who transfigured and then gave the mountain the name. <laughs> hey, praise God. <laughs> ah, hallelujah. So he was transfigured. That is the same kind of transfiguration. Now the Bible says that transfiguration is not just for the spirit man because on that day, Jesus did not just transfigure in his spirit. He didn't transfigure in his spirit. The Bible says even his clothes, the transfiguration was too much. It even affected the cloth. Let's not undermine this gospel. It has the ability to change your clothing. It has the ability to change my clothing, the physical cloth. I'm not talking about spiritual cloth. You know, we are used to the spiritual, 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 spiritual. The physical things, your physical face, your physical body can alter by reason of looking at the glory of God. Looking at the divine mirror, who you actually are. You see, as Jesus is, so am I. But how often do you see that? How often do you look at Jesus? Because if, if you look at Jesus more often, you will, that, that's, what, that's when the transfiguration will, will start taking place. The reason that's why we're not seeing any changes, anything that looks like the Bible in our life is because we have not set our eyes on the divine mirror. And because we have not set our eyes on the divine mirror, we have hindered the change. Because says we are changed. When we look, we are changed. When you don't look, you hinder the change. You pause the change. And when you pause the change, whatever you look like, if it is not Jesus Christ, it will always be challenged and defeated. The only man that lived on this earth that was never defeated is Jesus Christ. And God has desired to see us in that image, the undefeatable image. When you go to do business, you are undefeatable. Whatever you choose to do, you are undefeatable. Why? You have, you have, you have changed the glories. You have changed the glories. Every time you look at who you are in the word, you change glory. You change glory. Yes, but we all, <coughs> with open face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord. God wants us to behold his glory. To behold his glory. Okay? His glory. Not his wrath. Not his wrath, but his glory. Not his anger but his glory. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, the devil is moving around also having his own mirrors. Okay? He's moving around having his own mirrors such that if you don't have your image, if you don't have your image, the devil will give you one. When you got the book of Numbers, thank you, Lord. <coughs> Numbers 13, verse 31. Hmm. Numbers 13 from verse 31. Let's read something over there. We read 31 <coughs> downwards. Sorry. But the men that went up with him said, We be not able to go up against the people for they are stronger than we. <clears throat> the people are stronger than we. These people are reporting about the spying they went to do. <clears throat> and they said, the people we have seen are stronger than us. But they didn't fight with them to know. 
Okay? When they reached there, they didn't fight. There was no fighting happening. But then for them, they concluded that those guys are stronger. How do you know somebody is stronger if you have not tested his strength? If you have not fought with him, how do you know? How do you know he's stronger? Okay? How do you know he's stronger? They said, these guys are stronger than us. Why? How, how come you have come to that conclusion before you even engaged in a fight with them? <clears throat> so when they saw them, look at the, he says, but the men that went up with him said, we are not able to go up against the people for they are stronger than we, but the two. And they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel saying, the land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eats up, <laughs> is the land that eats up its inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. The people we saw in that land, they had gone to spy. And when they reached there, the people they saw in that land, it says they were of great stature. And it says that in the land, it swallowed. <laughs> And the land, the land swallows its inhabitants. But how come they fought the inhabitants? This is an evil report. Because if the land was for its inhabitants, they shouldn't have found any, at least one inhabitant. <laughs> hey. These are people who make, these are like people who like to make matters worse. <laughs> they like to make matters worse. Okay. Like they can say, I found when the traffic jam is like stones in the road. <laughs> the, the, the cars were not moved, they were like stones. Stones had been heaped in the road. You know, like the traffic jam can't be like that, but you know, some people just trying to emphasize the point. They say, uh, traffic jam was like big rocks put in, put in the road. <laughs> so this was, they're trying to, to explain the situation. They say, we, what we found there, what we found there, the land the swallows the inhabitants. So question, did you find any inhabitant there? Yes. So why, how come they were not swallowed? Praise God. So it says, that land we have, that we are going to search, it says is a land that eats up its inhabitants and all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. Okay. Verse 33 says, and there we saw the giants, there we saw the giants, we saw the giants, the son of, sons of Anak, which come of the giants which proceed from the giants, which are descendants of giants. It says, and we are in our own sight as grasshoppers, so, and so we were in their sight. It says, we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. When we saw them, the devil pulled out his mirror. I said, uh, look, uh, look at you guys. <laughs> so what, are, what, are, what are you grasshoppers doing here? <laughs> It says, is this November? Is this, is this, is this the month of Senen? <laughs> you have come in the month of Senen. They're going to pick you up and start eating. <laughs> you know, here in Uganda, November is, is called uh, the month of Senen. Grasshoppers. So it says, you guys, you have just come in November. This is, you have, you, it says, is, this, is it the season? The devil is telling you, is it the season for you to be eaten? <laughs> you better go back. You better go back. This land is not yours. By just the appearance, God spoke, to, no, 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 Satan spoke to them enough and convinced them <coughs> out of God's word. Sorry about, about that. He convinced them out of God's word. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So the devil pulled out his own mirror. He pulled out his own mirror and showed them who they were. Grasshoppers, you, can't, you cannot take this land. This land belongs to the sons of Anak. It belongs, it belongs to the sons of Anak, praise God. You know, here I'm, I'm actually having a son of Anak that I'm fighting with. And I have this as sufficient stones, praise God. I'm looking into the divine mirror to be transformed. Now that change that we see in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, that change in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, where it says, as we behold, as we behold the glory of the Lord. Now we see in there in Corinthians, it says, as we behold the glory of the Lord. These ones beheld the giants. They beheld the giants. They didn't behold God. That is why whatever they said was called an evil report. 
And that's what makes an evil report. When you declare what you see, okay? When you declare what you see physically, whatever you say will be an evil report, okay? When you say, oh, I don't know, I have this rash on my skin. That one, it is true, there's a rash on your skin, but in the realm of the spirit, it's an evil report. It's an evil report, okay? It's an evil report. You can't say, oh, I have, uh, I feel, I feel this. Yes, feeling is, is there, you can feel it. But don't open your mouth and bring out a, a, an evil report. Declare what the mirror declares. What does the mirror declare? The mirror does not declare you a grasshopper, okay? Where you have to keep running away from those who are trying to catch you to put you in a saucepan. Living a life where you are always running away from whoever is interested in, in eating you. <laughs> <laughs> the, you know, always escaping, it's always escaping, always escaping, always escaping. No, you're not a grasshopper. In the realm of the spirit, they were the actual giants. In the physical realm, the sons of Anak were the giants. Spiritually, the children of God were the giants. We are the actual giants. We are the actual giants. So it doesn't matter what we see out, outside. Whatever God has said is ours, is ours. He had given them the land. He says, take this, you go ahead and take the land. Okay? Go ahead and take the land. And so they went and spied. When they spied, they came up with a conclusion. The devil, the devil already was waiting for them with the mirror. He says, this is who you are. There are things you dream of taking, and somehow you feel disqualified. You begin to see a few things. And then you find yourself, uh, by, the, by things you have seen, you are just disqualified. You just don't know, I don't think I can, I can do this. I don't think I, I had overrated myself. I had overrated myself. I think, yeah, I had tried. I had tried. And then you back off and then you leave the big project there because you have, in the, the mirror you have seen in, you're not qualified for such a big thing. No, no. The Bible says all things are yours. That's the person in the divine mirror. The person in the divine mirror owns all things. Is the owner of all things. When you see, even in the physical mirror, when you go to the physical mirror and see you, that the person you're seeing in the mirror owns the world. Even though the devil wants to put you in one corner somewhere in the world, he wants to locate for you a corner and hide you, and hide you there. Okay? The devil wants you to live in a, some small corner somewhere. Yet the entire earth is yours. The people that have that ha, uh, uh, <coughs> have the kind of things that you don't feel qualified for, what is special with them that is not special with you? Okay, but that's why I refused to settle for less. Why? I know who I am in Christ. I know who I am in Christ. And what belongs to me, praise the Lord Jesus Christ. I know what belongs to me. God pre arranged and predestined for me to be in the image of his son. To be in the image of his son. So whatever Jesus is, I am. Now that's not a false claim. Okay, that's not a false claim. <clears throat> you will see it in the word of God, in the very declarations of Jesus Christ. You got the book of uh, John chapter 8, verse 12. John 8, 12. Okay. Are we there? <coughs> John chapter 8, verse 12. It says... Then spake Jesus <coughs> again unto them, I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. I am the light of the world. Jesus said, I am. He called himself the light of the world. He says, I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness. That's what Jesus said. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness. I am the light of the world. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. He called himself the light of the world. Now, you go to Matthew chapter 5, verse 14. 
Matthew 5, 14. Matthew 5, verse 14. He says, you are the light of the world. The same thing he's from saying about himself, the same thing he said about himself, he has said about you. He says, you are the light of the world. He says, I am the light of the world. You are the light of the world. The very same declaration. The same, same declaration. What he declared on himself is what he declared on you. He says, I am the light of the world. He says, you also are the light of the world. And what he said about himself is, he that follows me shall not walk in darkness. So that's the same thing also with you, that those who follow you cannot walk in darkness. You see, when Jesus is talking about us, he's bored about it. He, he, was, not, he was not shying away from telling us, who, he says, you are the light of the world. He said it with boldness. The problem comes when it is now us to declare. When it, is, when it is our turn to declare, that's where the challenge is. But for him, when he, he was declaring, he was bored about the declaration. He said, you are the light of the world. If Jesus was bored about saying it, I'm also bored in saying it. I'm also bored in saying it. I am the light of the world. And he that follows me shall not walk in darkness. Why? Because I also follow Christ. You see that? I'm not just following Christ as he is, so, so I am. Which means I emit light that is sufficient to guide the world. I emit light sufficient to guide the world. I am the light of the world. The world can depend on me for information. The world can depend on me for guidance. Do you know what you have become? That is what is in the divine mirror. That's the declaration of the divine mirror. The declaration of the divine mirror. It is showing that you are the light. The, the word light is information. Light is information. Light doesn't just, doesn't just inform. Like when you switch on light, you are informed that this and this and this thing are in the room. It doesn't just inform. Light is itself information. Okay, so it says we are the information of the world. You are the information of the world. Now that's very big. You are the information of the world, which means if you are the information of the world, it means the world shouldn't be the one informing you. You are the one supposed to be informing the world. <laughs> we haven't begun preaching the gospel. We haven't started. You are the information of the world, which means the world takes definitions from you. Don't let the world define you. Define the world with the word of God. Define the world with the word of God. You are the light of this world. You give guidance to this world. We don't run to the world for guidance. Christian, Christians have cheapened Christianity. We, we're looking for guidance from the world. No, it's wrong. It is the world supposed to find out from us. How do you guys do these things? How, how, do you, how do you turn water into wine? Okay? How do you turn water into wine? The, the world should be asking us, how do you raise the dead? How do you heal the sick? Okay? This should be the interviews. But how many times have they come to interview us? When they come to interview us, they interview us on offerings and tithes. You guys, why are you collecting a lot of tithes? <laughs> Where do you put the tithe you collect? Those are the questions that interviewers are asking pastors. Why did you buy a Lamborghini? <laughs> when you have poor people around the world, why are you driving an expensive car? Eh? Those, are the, those are the questions that uh, people with cameras like to ask pastors. We want to start being asked, how do you raise the dead? Tell us, how are the dead raised? How are the sick healed? Okay. The reason that's why these things are not being asked is because we have cheapened our own Christianity. We have made it cheap. We, look, we, we have made it look like a life of you know, grasshoppers that keep hopping from one place to the next at the mercy of, you know, at the mercy of uh, those that collect them. No. We are the light of this world. Now, Jesus Christ is a savior. Jesus is a savior. Do you know also the Bible calls you a savior? 
the Bible calls me, calls you a savior. It is in the prophetic utterances. We are saviors. According to scriptures, we are also saviors. But if you don't know you're a savior, you will look, move around looking for salvation. Okay? From the world. You will walk around looking for salvation because the devil has shown you that you need salvation. He's not showing you the savior, the savior you. He's showing you that you are in need of salvation. All the time, you need, you need salvation from somebody. Salvation from somewhere. Salvation from somewhere. The, the, the verses over there, Obadiah chapter 1, verse 21. He says, and saviors shall come up on Mount Zion. So his, his mission is saviors. Now you in your head, you only know one savior, Jesus Christ. That's the only savior you know. But the Bible is introducing, it says they are saviors. Okay? Saviors. So in the divine mirror, you are a savior. But the devil all your life wants you to see a you that needs salvation all the time. You need to be saved from death. You need to be saved from poverty. You need to be saved from sickness. You need to be saved from all. It shows, it shows, a, you, it shows you a you that is in trouble and trapped. So you always see a trap to you, a disadvantage to you, why? You are, the mirror you're using is a demonic mirror. The Bible talks about doctrines of devils. Now, the word of God is the doctrine of God. Now, the doctrine of God is the divine mirror. The doctrine of God is the divine mirror. The doctrine of the devil is the satanic mirror. The satanic mirror is the one that is showing you you need salvation, you need salvation, you need salvation. But the Bible says we are saved by grace. We are saved. We are, are saved. We are saved. Oh, hallelujah. We are saved. Do you know the meaning of saying, I am saved? People think it's just a name. The people say, we are saved this. No, we're not just saved this. We are saved. That's, that's our status. Saved. Saved means what? Safe. Saved means safe. Okay? Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. We are saved. We are, which means we are not in trouble. That's the meaning of being saved. To be saved means you are not in trouble. I am not in trouble. I am saved. When there is coronavirus going around, me, I'm saved. Okay? <laughs> I'm already saved from the coronavirus, coronavirus is walk, walking around. I'm saved. When death is going around, me, I'm saved. Now, that's my declaration. I am saved because I have been declared saved by grace. The divine mirror has said, Masasi, you are saved. You are saved. I said, yes, sir, I am saved, I am saved, I am saved. Praise the Lord, I am saved. <laughs> I agree with what I see in the divine mirror. If you don't agree with what is in the mirror, you will always look for salvation. Yet the Bible says in Obadiah chapter 1, verse 21, it says, and saviors shall come up on Mount Zion to judge the Mount of Esau, and the kingdom shall be the Lord's. It says, saviors shall come up on Mount Zion, it says, to judge the Mount of Esau. Why the Mount of Esau? Esau is a representation of the flesh, okay? Zion is a representation of the spirit. So we are of the spirit, and we are supposed to judge those of the flesh. We are supposed to be the ones judging those of the flesh, okay? We're supposed to be judging those of the flesh, the mountain of Esau. But what is happening to, to Christianity today is that the mountain of Esau has subdued those, of, those, of, those on Mount Zion. It's a marvel. It's a wonder. When God looks at it, it's not acceptable. It is the people of the world who are in technology. Okay? They're the ones who, who, who head the technology. Such that if they choose now to remove us on Zoom, <laughs> you will not see a Christian here. <laughs> Praise God. Why shouldn't the church be the one owning these Zoom things? You see that? We have allowed Esau to give us Zoom and Facebook. <laughs> if Esau changes his mind, we are, the church is gone. <laughs> God forbid. But it should be the church who should open their eyes early and come to their place and begin to judge the month of Esau. But how are they going to judge the month of Esau? They have to come as saviors as saviors, okay? Financial saviors, whereby if any man has any crisis, we save him. We have the money to help any man in the world. Why? Because we are the light of the world. President Jesus Christ, we are the light of the world. 
and to be the light of the world. Have you ever seen this? You see, what you see, the sun and the moon are above the earth. That is how they're able to become lights of the world. The sun and the moon are the physical lights of the world. But look how far they are from the earth. Okay, look how far they are from the earth. So even us being the light of the world, we cannot be at the level of the earth. We can't be at the level of the earth and shine for the earth. We can't. The reason as to why the, 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 the earth, the Mount of Esau looks at us and feels pity is because we are lights that are down here. If it is true that we are the light of the world, we shouldn't be at the same level with them. The sun knows that, the moon knows that. That's why they're up there. They were placed up there to benefit the earth. If we are going to benefit this earth, we have to find our position above the earth. We have to find our position above the earth. We have to be above the earth. And what will put you above the earth is the moving from glory to glory, the changing from glory to glory. Because as we change from glory to glory, we emit more light, more light and more light. Praise God. And so it is important that you know who you are. <clears throat> now, let me show you something in the book of James. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory to God. James chapter 1, from verse 22. James 1, from verse 22. He says, <clears throat> but be ye doers of the word, be ye doers of the word, Okay, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. It says, be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Now that word deceiving, that word deceiving has an interpretation that denotes a, an overthrowing from power. Okay? Like, when you overthrow a government, that word deceiving, it has that character in its meaning of overthrowing from government. So it says, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, overthrowing your own selves. It says, if you don't do the word, you dethrone yourself, you overthrow. It's like you remove yourself from power. Okay? You remove yourself from power. It says, be doers of the word, not just hearers. Okay? Verse 23. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, I want us to, mark, I want us to follow me. It says, if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, look at that, he is like a, a man beholding his natural face in a glass. He sees himself in a glass. Okay? Verse 24 says, for he beholds himself, he sees who he is, okay, and goes his way, okay, and straight away forgets what manner of man he was. Straight away forgets, okay. Now, this is very powerful. Straight away forgets. It says he sees himself in the mirror, goes his way. And straightway forget what manner of man he was. Hallelujah. Forgets what manner of man he was. What manner of man are you? Or have you also forgotten? Have you forgotten that as he is, so are you? Have you forgotten that you are more than a conqueror? Have you forgotten? Now, when challenges come, they prove that you have actually forgotten. By the way you speak when you are challenged. Do you know when Christians are, have nothing challenging them, they can confess all these things. I am, I am oh, I'm the, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Oh, I am more than a conqueror. Oh, I am undefeated. But they say all these things when everything is going real. But when now they are under pressure, the words that come out of their mouth, will tell you that these are not doers of the word. Yet under pressure is the opportunity to do the word. When under pressure, when things come and begin to press you, that is the actual time 
to demonstrate who you are. That's the, that's the actual time. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So it says, this man forgets, he forgets, he forgets, he forgets, he forgets. Now that forgetting there, that forgetting. Why is he forgetting? Let me show you why he forgets. He says he beholds himself, the Bible says, and goes his way. These are people who read the Bible and they choose to go their way. Even after reading the Bible. Even after like this, today's message, they will, someone will go and do, do, go their own way. Having seen what the word of God says about them, after the service, some people just continue their own way. It says this man goes his way. So he's more interested in his way than the, than the word of God. Doesn't matter how many times you declare this word to such people. After they have seen themselves in the mirror, say, oh, wow. I'm more than conqueror. Wow, wow. Amen. Hallelujah. They even sow a seed. After sowing a seed, they go their way. They go their way. Now, if you keep going your way, you will keep getting your, the results you have always been getting. Because your way can only produce those results. Your way will always produce for you those results. So if you're interested in your way, you're also interested in your kind of results. So you can't pray, oh, God, change me. Oh, God, change me. God says, if you want to be changed, behold the glory of the Lord. Behold the glory of the Lord. So the work of any preacher also is to show the glory of God to the people. So that when he shows them that glory, the people will change. No preacher will expect his congregation to change that is not showing them the glory of God. Whatever we show the congregation, it is what they are going to metamorphose into. They will go into a metamorphosis into what we show them. What the preacher shows you is what you will become. Okay, what you keep hearing, what you keep seeing portrayed on the pulpit is what you're going to become. So if the glory of God is not going to be preached, then the people will not have the actual change that God wants in them. So people must see the glory of God so that they can be able to change from glory to glory. Okay, from glory to glory. There are pastors who always wonder, why are my members becoming worse and worse? Check what you are showing them. Because what they see is what they will become. And the Bible says he wants us to be conformed to the image of his son, not to become anything else, but to be conformed to the image of his son. That's why he began this thing in the first place, that we may be conformed to the image of his son. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. And so he doesn't want us to forget who we are. When you look at who you are and you, you notice that as he is, so, you, so are you. You hold on to that image. And that image becomes your confession. Because any confession that is not... That one is an evil report. Is an evil report. Is an evil report. And those who give evil reports never arrive in the promised land. <laughs> God even said, I swear, <laughs> this one is not entering. The very God who swore to give them the land, reached some says, Ah, I had sworn that they will enter. I swear they will not enter. He says, I swear, this one cannot ha handle the billions. I swear. People who talk like this cannot handle the billions of money. <laughs> I swear they will never see the billions. Why? Because they, they overgive evil reports. I don't have this. They always voice what they don't have. Always voicing what they don't have. Always voicing how they feel. Always vo giving a voice to their feelings. Giving voice to, to their lack, to their situation. Always giving it voice releasing an evil report if you keep releasing an evil report evil will always report i don't know i don't know if i've understood that people if people like to, to 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 tweet you can tweet that one if you keep giving an evil report evil will always report <laughs> you wonder why evil always reports say i'm here well why have you come uh so that you can continue giving <laughs> <laughs> an evil report that I'm, I've come, I'm back. <laughs> God says, I swear you guys, you are not going to enter into this promised land. Yes, I know I have said it, that you shall possess the billions, you shall possess these things. But if you keep talking like this, you are ordained to move around this mountain until you die. <laughs> Hi. Until you die. Praise God. But if you behold, says you will be changed, and says, and that is the work of the Holy Spirit. If you look at that, that Corinthians, Second Corinthians, it says, This is by the Spirit of God. 
It's a, that change takes place by the Spirit of God. Look at it. Verse 18 says, But we all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory. It says, Even as by the Spirit of God, by the Spirit of God, which means the change, when you behold, the Holy Spirit takes responsibility of changing you. He's the one that changes your form. The Spirit of God is the one that changes your form from glory to glory. As your part is to behold the glory of God, and the part of the Holy Spirit is to keep transfiguring you, transfiguring you, transfiguring you. As you behold, you are transfigured. As you behold, you are transfigured. When you are transfigured, you move from state to state. You move from state to state. Metamorphosis is different from natural growth. Human beings in, act, in nature don't metamorphose. In nature, human beings don't metamorphose. They just grow. They increase in height, everything. You know, the, the cells just keep dying off and then the body keeps producing new cells. Okay? But now when you talk about now things like cockroaches, they metamorphose. Insects metamorphose. From one state, if it was eggs, it moves from eggs to lava, to pupa, then to adult. Eggs, lava, pupa, adult. If you come and see the eggs, when you come back, you will not see eggs anymore. Once the metamorphosis happens, when you come back, it will not be eggs anymore. It will be lava. If you delay there and come back, you will not find lava. You will find the pupa. Okay? And the pupa does not look anything close to lava. And lava does not look anything close to eggs. These are different states. Eggs, lava, pupa. When you see adults, you can't believe it was a pupa. Okay? It is a change of state, which means it is such a change that you will not be recognizable after. If you look at these things, if people come back later, they will not, they will not recognize you. You will have transfigured. You will have transfigured. These are not eggs. This is not lava. This is not pupa. This is adult. Adult. Do you understand why you talk about spiritual growth? When you have now come to adults, you don't look like eggs, you don't look like lava, you don't look like pupa, you are an adult. Before you are an adult, you are a pupa. Do you know how many pupas <laughs> we have in Christianity? <laughs> Actually, a pupa is better. Lava. <laughs> when, you meet a, when you meet a butterfly at lava stage, it doesn't look good. <laughs> <laughs> yet it is meant to be up there flying but lava walks on ground this butterfly you see when it is lava it is trapped on a lower level it's trapped on the, it has to move on the ground because of being lava and the pupa you find it on the ground and if any, any chicken can pick it up when chicken comes and finds lava it picks <laughs> but once it has become a butterfly, it doesn't matter how good chicken can run, that thing can fly. It's no longer edible by chicken. Why? Because it has come to adult. These things, they speak of the spiritual things. Once you are an adult, nothing can pick you up. If you are pickable, it means you need a, trans you need a transfiguration. And the transfiguration will happen if you see yourself in the divine mirror. In the divine mirror. They begin to fall in love with the divine mirror. Don't, don't, because there are people who subconsciously believe many things. See, let me say this in the last few minutes we have. Your subconscious is the most important. Your, sub, your subconscious is the most important because. The images you have in your subconscious, it doesn't matter how we preach. If we don't preach them out, that's what you'll always believe you are. Okay? Your, the subconscious keeps, for it, it keeps the strongest convictions. Your subconscious, it keeps the strong, the, it is the one that has your true definitions are in that side, the subconscious. The subconscious. Things which you which you believe unconsciously, you just know, such that if, if something scares you, the subconscious is what is going to provide the image of a dead you. Say, eh, I'm dead. 
In other words, you see yourself, the, 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 the purest of the information is kept in the subconscious. And so you have to feed on the word of God enough. No preacher has that much power to reach that area, the subconscious. You have to provide, you have to, to be the one to pay attention to the word of God enough. For us, the far we can go as we preach is your conscience. The far we can go in preaching is in your conscience. But the subconscious, which holds the purest of convictions, it is now your responsibility to do the meditation, the study and the meditation, to change the subconscious, subconscious ideas. There are things at the back of your mind which will always come out under pressure. You can profess to be a strong man, but under pressure, we will see a shaking you. But the shaking you is not coming from the conscience, it's coming from the subconscious. What we call the back of your mind, okay, that we never see. At the back of your mind, that back of your mind is where the, fa the failure that you have been confessing is. <laughs> Me, I'm a failure. Where is that coming from? From, this, from the store of the subconscious. So it is the meditating of the word of God that will break that kind of rock. The Bible says the word of God is like a hammer. It breaks down the rock. You need to break down all those fake images, all those mirrors that don't mirror who you are. You are as he is. Maintain that confession and live by it. Praise God. When he says this by the Spirit of God, it means the Holy Spirit wants to cause this change only if you behold. Because if you don't behold, your life will never be transformed. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe that is sufficient teaching for today. And I, pr I pray that it has helped you. I pray that it has taken your knowledge of Christ to another level. From today, when you're studying Christ, see yourself. Because Christ is our divine mirror. He's the one who declares who we are. The more you know him, the more you know you. The more you know Jesus, the more you know you. Find out who this Jesus is. As you're finding out, you will be finding out who you actually are. That's the gospel. Simple message. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So I want to pray with you in this last minute. Father, in the name of Jesus, I seal this word in the hearts of those, those that have listened to it. Father, I pray that you will continuously reveal yourself to us, that we may always behold you, that we may always behold your glory. Re reveal that glory to us every day in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, because in knowing you, we know who we are. In knowing you, we know who we are. That we may not be tossed to and fro like children by every wind of doctrine, but that our eyes will be focused on what you declare us to be. You have declared us to be righteous, and so are we. You have declared us to be victors, and so are we. Everything you have declared us to be, so are we. We give you praise and glory in Jesus' mighty name and matchless name we have prayed. Amen and amen and amen.